When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he was he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. And I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello everyone, God bless you. Welcome today to More Than Conquerors program. And Terry and I are here to talk to you again about the wonderful lifestyles that God has provided through His Word. Amen. Tried and proven, as you say, no theory. No theory. <laughs> Lived it, uh, put it to work, seen the fruit of it, received the harvest, and uh, you can't talk us out of it because it's just work, been working too long, you know? And uh, we've been talking to you the last several weeks about living to give. Living to give is a lifestyle, as you it said. It is a lifestyle. It's certainly not what uh, the average person right. or Christian even would think when they hear the term living to give. Living they, to may, give. they may think, oh, no, they're going <laughs> to preach a message on prosperity and try to get my money. And, and of course, uh, we don't ever take up offerings here. And and uh, haven't taken an offering for me in 55 years. I wouldn't start today. Well, that's right. But um, uh, it's it's about getting. It's about the average Christian. Uh, well, living coming like God. up to another level. Yeah. In in their status to bless them. Right. It's not about blessing us. It's about blessing them. That's right. You know, when God told Elisha to go down to the to to town after the brook Cherith dried up and his his being fed by the brook and and by the ravens. And then he said, go down to town. I, I've commanded a widow woman to sustain you. That's that, wasn't, that wasn't about sustaining Elijah. No, right. God can take care of him. Right. That was so she and yeah, her son wouldn't that. That, That's so she and her son wouldn't die. That's right. Because she said, I've only got enough oil and meal to make one cake for me and one cake for my son. We're going to eat it and die. So I'm going to go outside and get two sticks. I just need a little bitty fire and I'm going to get two sticks. And so she ran into the prophet and he said, make me a cake first. And right. she did. And uh, so he moved in with her for a year. And so they had food for a year when she didn't think she had enough just for two. That wasn't about sustaining the prophet. That wasn't about helping the preacher. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've even had people tell me, Renee, over all these decades, they say, well, Brother Terry, now that works for you because living to give works for you because you're a preacher, because you're a missionary. Well, I've got news for you. I know lots of preachers it doesn't work for. <laughs> and I know lots Sadly of missionaries so. it doesn't work for. And Sadly the third so. thing I'd say about that is it was working for me before I went into ministry. We, Jackie and I started in the now, Army such a good when I was a soldier, right. you know, making $128 a month from the right. U.S. government. I mean, I had my own business at home, made lots of money. And then she was a dental technician. She made good money. And then we got drafted in the Army, and we're making $128 a month. That isn't working. <laughs> and so we started living well, a different lifestyle a uh, that we learned from Oral Roberts at that time. And uh, and it started working for us in the Army. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about being a preacher. It was no. about it was about just working 
God's laws and operating in God's That's right. system. That's right. Well, and, and everything in the kingdom of God is line upon line, precept upon precept, sure. here a little, there a little, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Those are all, those are all scriptures from the Word of God oh, individually absolutely. telling us that we can, if we're created in the image of God the Father, and we are spirit, soul, and body, just like He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right, right. But then also the mind of God in Genesis 1 was multiply and multiply replenish. And so if we're created the mind of God in His image, then there has to be... that was be, before the fall. That yes. was in the garden before the fall. Yes. But then it's continued after the after fall. The so the fall. plan never changed the plan, just exactly. because sin came and, and corruption came and, and right. disease came and sickness came. God said the same thing to Adam and Eve, multiply and be fruitful. As he said to Noah and the seven people that right. came out of the ark, he wow. said, now multiply and be fruitful. Right. Same plan. Same, it hadn't changed. <laughs> and then when Jesus came along, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow the end of the belief. So he's saying the same thing, multiply and be fruitful. Go, exactly. get, go get God a family. Only where in the Old Testament it was by by natural procreation. Right. Man and wife come together in pure marital love and nine months later have a baby. Now, because of Jesus, we can be born again. Hallelujah. So you can have thousands and thousands of babies. You know, I can go and have That's a crusade right. with 100,000 Muslims or Hindus or atheists or animists or Buddhists or Shintoists wow. or whatever they are and, and have 100,000 babies in a night because Jesus is saying the same thing God said to Moses, uh, to Noah, same thing God That's said right. to Adam. And then even John at the very end of the Bible in Third John, John <laughs> said now, he's only 90 years old. He right. said now if I could just tell you one thing, right. above everything else, Above everything else, I want you to prosper and That's be right. healthy, even as your soul prospers, so that, verse 5, so that right. you can do good to the brethren and and, and good to the stranger. Right. In verse 8, so that you can be a fellow helper to the truth. What's the truth? Get the word right. out, the word, the word of God. So so John said, you know, you got to fulfill the great commission. You got to win souls. You got to give God a family. You got to multiply and be fruitful. So to do that, I'm telling you, you need money and health. That's Isn't a, that simple? Well, it is. And it's just it, it really what we're trying to say to you, if, you know, if, if, if we haven't said it correctly yet for you, is that we, we want to help you think like God thinks. Of course. About it's soul. It's thinking in the soul, thinking in your mind, your will, your emotions, like God thinks, like Absolutely. he wants you it, to it's think. It's a lifestyle. It's God's it's lifestyle. It's God's lifestyle. Talk like God, think like God, act like God. Exactly. And it's not and difficult. It's, and as we said last week and week after week, it's the great equalizer. Yes, it is. Uh, operating, living to give, operating offerings, operating That's tithing right. makes it equal for the widow woman, right? the soccer mom, or the billionaire. It, it, it puts them on equal footing. It really does. You know, to what, because God's dealing in percentage, He's not dealing in amount. Well, and He's into quality rather than quantity. Exactly. To try to get you to get a real good, deep foundation in abundance. Because His nature is abundance. Look, no, exactly. Just look at everything that He's done. The stars, and, the flowers, the trees, <laughs> nature, the bugs, the animals. Everything that there is out there, God's done in abundance. Abundance. And He doesn't want us and he's to got, live. And, and He's got an accounting system for it. Yeah. You know, astronomers tell us if you want to count the stars, you'd have to put the number wow. 10, one zero, and follow that with 27 zeros. Yeah. So that's that's 1 plus 28 zeros. I don't know how much that is. That's a bunch. That's right. And and it said the Bible says, and God calls them all by name. He knows wow. the name of every one. <laughs> that's just, you know, when you think about that, God is... In his nature is love. And exactly. I mean, God, he says he is love. His nature is abundance. He wants to administer those two qualities of love and abundance to the world yes. through believers, through yes, people yes, that yes. understand that about him, that we understand that he is a God of love, that he is a God of abundance, and that he wants that mindset to overtake us God's in always everything into your that mindset. we do. Yeah, he's always into your mindset, always into your lifestyle. He's trying to get the poor person to come up here. Right. He's trying to get the rich person to say, hey, you're not exempt. You need to think like this. Right. You know, and he says to Timothy, tell, charge yeah. the rich. You know, well, that they be not has... high minded, that they don't think they're right. cool. That's you know, they, they don't think of themselves more highly than they ought to, that they that they don't trust in uncertain riches and right. tell them they must give. They must attribute. They must communicate, communicate in the Bible. We use that word. It's all yeah. about giving. Yeah. And so, uh, you, you know, it's like it's like the rich man 
in uh, what Luke chapter 12, uh, when, when uh, I've always said the guy, the rich man in Luke chapter 12 had severe eye trouble yeah. because he uses the word I or my yeah. or mine 11 times in that one that's paragraph, shocking. in that one couple few sentences. Yeah, that's he says, shocking. It says, Jesus tells this story in Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 16. He says, he says down, the parable, uh, 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 he says, um, uh, he, he says there was, there was a rich man. I don't have the scripture here in front of me, but he says, he says that, that this rich man, now so in the first place, we know he's a rich guy. Right. You know, we know that he understands the laws of prosperity, of the laws of, 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 of operating, the laws of buying and selling, the laws yeah. of planting and harvest. Multiplication. Because he, because he planted and got back more. And it says that, right. the, uh, it says that, this, that, that his, his barns were full. He just kept harvesting and putting it in his barns. And finally, he said, what, uh, yeah. what am I going to do? I know what I'll do. I'll tear down these barns and I'll build bigger barns. And then I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much good wow. laid up for many years. So eat, you know, eat, sleep and drink and be merry. And God said to him, you're a fool. Yeah. You're a fool. Isn't this that shocking? Night, God said this night, your life, your soul will be required of you. And then he asked him a question. Then whose will those things be that thou hast provided? Then when you die, what's going to happen to all that barn full of stuff, <laughs> barns full of stuff yeah, that really. you've provided? Well, of course, the answer is the ungodly relatives to get it. They've been waiting for him to die off for a long time anyway. But the, the point of the matter is, why did God call him a fool? God didn't mind him being rich. Right. God invented the system. God didn't mind him sowing. God invented the system. God didn't mind him reaping. God invented the system. God right. didn't mind him putting it in the barn. God invented the system. But what God did mind is that the guy didn't know. He wasn't that he was rich. It's that he didn't know what to do with the excess or the overflow. He thought he was supposed to truth. hoard it. He That's thought he was supposed truth. to save it. And God, God is never into that. He's never no. into saving. He's never into hoarding. That's right. Uh, you, you, were never, you were never intended to save. It's, it's like you have to have air to breathe. You yeah. have to breathe. But I tell church congregations sometimes, I say, everybody just take a big, deep breath. Take a deep breath right now. <gasps> they'll say, now hold it for seven minutes. You know, and they just go, <laughs> they can't do it. You're, you're not designed to hoard that. That's right. You have to have water uh, or, or you'll die, but you just can't go drink five gallons today and then not drink anymore for two weeks. Right. You, you can't save that up. Right. With God, everything's a flowing system. That's so and good. And so, so God called the rich fool a fool. Right. Because he didn't know what to and do. And he was. Yeah. He didn't know what to do with the excess. He didn't mind him having excess. He didn't mind yeah. him having overflow. He just didn't know what to do with it. So he thought he was supposed to hoard it up. And it, it wasn't meant for that. It was meant to replant again, plant it again, plant it again, right. plant it again. Keep the system going. Keep the, keep the, keep the lifestyle going to bless people, That's to help right. people. So I've always said the guy had severe eye trouble because he said, what will I do? Right. I will pull down my barns and build greater. Right. You know, th then I will say to my soul, and, and it's all about him. It's all me, 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 I, my, or mine. Eleven times during that, during that little I was just I was just looking at this, too. It is, uh, you know, Luke chapter 12, as Terry said, and the story is, uh, you know, begins in verse 16 of Luke chapter 12. Mm -hmm. And it just is an amazing account yes. of what goes on in the mind, mm -hmm. which lets you know mm -hmm. that that's where the problem is and how people are thinking for the, the rich man, the poor man, right. everybody the but same. See, when the average church person reads that, yeah. they think God's upset because he's a rich guy. Right. They think God doesn't like rich people. Well, that's people. what I heard. And that's not true. Yeah, Pentecostal church. Exactly. Yeah. Jesus also tells a story in Luke chapter 16. And he said, he said, there was a certain rich man. Right. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Right. And he said that Lazarus begged for crumbs at the rich man's table. And then it says, and, and Lazarus died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Wow. Then Jesus said, and the rich what man also died. Yeah. And in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments. Right. Well, see, everybody think, oh, okay, well, Lazarus went to heaven because he's poor. And the rich man went to heaven because he's rich. No, 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 that had nothing to do with anything. What, what, what it was is the rich man wasn't born again. He wasn't saved. Right. And so he lift up his eyes being in torments and he saw Abraham and he saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And he said, he said, send that beggar to me. Mm -hmm. Just dip his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this flame. Hell really has flames. Right. It's really hot. It's really torments. That's what the Bible and, says. And, and Abraham said, I'm sorry, we can't do that. There's a great gulf between the two of us and we can't come there and you can't come here. And he said, well, then send him to my father's house. Send the beggar to my father's house right. because I have five brothers. 
and I don't want them to come to this place of torment. And he and Abraham said, "No, he, they've got the church and the word. They've, they've got they've got Moses and the prophets." And uh, he said, "Yeah, but if one went to the dead, they'd believe." And Abraham said, "No, they wouldn't." He said, "If they don't believe the church and the word, they don't believe Moses and the prophets. They're not going to believe somebody uh, going to." But the rich man said, "Yeah, but if somebody will testify to them, mm. they will repent, well, and then they won't come to this place of torment." So, see, the whole the whole crux of the matter is you need to be testified to. Somebody needs to tell you about Jesus, and then you need to repent. Right. That's why he was in hell. It wasn't because he's rich. God didn't mind him being rich. Well, God didn't reward the beggar because he's poor. He didn't punish the rich guy because he's rich. It was about did you repent or not? Right. Did you love God or not? And, you know, the church thinks that the lack of sin is what gets you into heaven. No, no, no. It, it, the Bible says it's believing in Jesus gets you to heaven. Right. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe He's born of a virgin? Do you believe He lived on this earth as a man? Do you believe He died on the cross for you? Do you believe He paid for your sins and uh, your salvation with His own blood? Well, do you believe He right. rose again Just the third simple. day? Do you believe He's alive today? Yeah. If you do, call on Him. You'll Hallelujah. be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe That's in your wonderful. heart, yeah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is, you yeah. know, God raised Jesus from the dead. You shall be saved. Romans 10. You know, that's just so simple, Terry, that, you know, we, it it's such it should be so simple mm -hmm. for everybody, because we, if we ask ourselves the question, well, what is living? Yeah. You know, what what quality of life mm -hmm. would you like to have? Sure. You know, over in, in uh, was it First Timothy, the Apostle Paul said that if you would pray for your leaders and pray for those that are in government, right. you would lead a quiet, quiet and peaceable, and peaceable life, life in all godliness and honesty. And all godliness and honor. And, and there is that quality of life that God wants us to actually live our lives in. You it, know, it comes down to philosophies of life or right. mindsets. Exactly. You know, it, it's like the story of the Good Samaritan, which is what I use in my series on living to give. Yeah. You know, living to give. We just did this series with four four sessions in it for four services a living to give. And, and I and I go to to Luke, uh, Luke chapter 10. And, and it's in Luke chapter 10, Jesus tells us the story that we all know of the Good Samaritan. Right. And he, he gives us, he says, there was a certain uh, man that went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among thieves. And he said, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. So they left wow. him naked and half dead on the side of the road. And it says, then by chance there came by a certain priest that way. He saw the man, but he wouldn't help him. He passed by on the other side. Later, a Levite out of the tribes of the priest came by. He wow. saw him, wouldn't help him, passed by on the other side. We don't know why. And he said, and then a Samaritan came. And I think it's odd that Jesus chose to use a Samaritan, a Samaritan. because a Samaritan wasn't a Jew. Right. And Jesus had even told his disciples, don't you go to Samaria and don't you witness to a Samaritan. Well, you, you stay with the Jews. So, and so Samaritans <laughs> were kind of like what we'd call in the old days a half breed. I guess that's yeah. a racist statement today. I don't even know what the proper term would be. But, right. uh, you know, but he wasn't accepted. He wasn't in the social class. No, of the he Jews, was not though. in the social class of the Jews. And, and, and so Jesus said, but this Samaritan came along. He saw the man. Yes. He had compassion on him. That's it. Went to him. That's it. Took out his own oil, his own bandages, his yes. own first aid kit, ministered to the man, right. put him on his own modern day taxi cab, his own That's beast so of burden, wonderful. took him down to the local hotel, yeah. gave the hotel guy his credit card and said, I'll like, take care of the expenses. Whatever example. he needs, let him sign it to yeah. the room. I'll take care of it. And Jesus said, which one of these guys do you think was the friend to the, to the guy that fell among thieves? And they said, well, you know, obviously the, the, the Samaritan, the last guy right. that helped him. And Jesus said, yeah, you go and do likewise. Jesus liked that philosophy of life yes. because there was three philosophies of life there that Jesus tells us about. And he, he gives us the thieves philosophy. Well, back in those days, 2000 years ago, this is how the thieves thought. But today, 2000 years later, thieves still think the same way. That's right. And, and their philosophy of life was what's thine, thine is, mine, is mine. And I'll take it by whatever means necessary. I'll break in your house. I'll, today we're doing smash and grab. The police don't even get them anymore unless they're stealing over a thousand dollars worth of merchandise. Is that Horrific. dumb or what? And, and but their mindset is, well, I need that. That's mine. You shouldn't have that. I'll just take what you have. What's what's yours is mine. Yeah. And I'll get it by any means necessary. That's one philosophy of life. Let's remind the people real quickly here. John ten ten, mm -hmm. where Jesus said He came to give us life yeah. and that more abundantly. Yeah. And the devil He's came to came. steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. It's the life. It's the mindset of hell. Mm -hmm. To kill, steal, the and destroy. And the lifestyle. Yeah, which one talking, do you want? That's what we're talking yeah. about. What yeah. is living? Yeah, what you is know? living? And so Jesus said, 
uh, the thieves' uh, philosophy was, what's mine is mine, what's your thine is mine, and I'll get it. Well, obviously, nobody in the church thinks that way. No. Obviously, God doesn't bless that. Yeah. A Christian doesn't think that way. No. But then there was a second group of people. There were the priests, the preachers, Isn't the ministers. Isn't that shocking? And they wouldn't even stop and help the guy. They I don't know wouldn't. why. Maybe they were late for church service. <laughs> Sometimes you get so busy working like the devil for the Lord, you get you don't take time to help people. That's it. Well, what was That's their philosophy it. of life? Their philosophy Priorities of life was what's mine is so mine, off. and I'm going to keep it. In other words, they had oil and, and bandages. They did. Too. Everybody they in those it. days walked. Yeah. And they had little leather pouches of a first aid kit. Yeah. They could have stopped and given him some that water to drink. That was part of the priestly garment was exactly. to carry that. And, and some bandages and some oil in his, in his yes, sores, his wounds. Right. They could have helped him. Well, they could have shared with what they had, but they didn't. They know what's mine is mine. And, you know, sadly, church people even think that way. They sure do. What's too. mine is mine. And they don't just think that way with their brother and sister in church. They think that way with God. Lord, this is mine. Yeah. Now, Lord, you can save my soul. You can heal my body. You leave my money alone. Yeah. Don't you ask me for my money. Don't you ask me for a car. Don't you ask me for, for clothes. <laughs> Don't you ask me for, for to, you know, to buy something for the church. Or, to, or make to, any sacrifice. No, I'll do it not. if it's convenient. Yeah. yeah. And then Jesus. So, so that was their philosophy. It was mine is mine. Right. And I'll keep it. But then the good Samaritan came along and his philosophy was what's mine is thine. And you can have it if you need it. I'll yeah. I'll help you. I'll I'll Isn't take what that, I have and I'll give it to you, class and I'll bless thinking. you if you need that it. Is so I'm going to help class. you. And so Jesus yeah. was more impressed with that. Yes. And that, and he told the rich young ruler and, and the and the people standing around. He said, "You go and do likewise." Which which brings us back to Matthew twenty twenty. You mentioned two or three weeks ago that Jesus is walking that along, is so and sacred. here comes James and John and their mama. Yeah. Now, you know, the Bible tells us that James and John uh, were the th sons of thunder. It calls yeah. them the sons of thunder. <laughs> and, and I've always said this. I said, you know, most everybody that reads that thinks that that's their daddy, that yeah. uh, Zebedee was, was, was thunder. But I think it was mama that was thunder. <laughs> they were the sons of thunder, all right. But it was yeah. Mrs. Zebedee because it says <laughs> she came to Jesus. As he yes. was walking along, and she said, "Jesus she seemed to be a she's you know, probably she a supporter of his ministry and travel with him, so she thought she yeah, had some right, leverage." Right. And she said, "Jesus, uh, <laughs> grant that these my two sons yes. may set the one on my right and the other on my left in your kingdom." Yeah. And Jesus said, "Well, that's not mine to give. Right. That's my Father in heaven's d decision." And he said, uh, can you drink of the cup I'm going to drink of and be baptized with the baptism I'm going to be baptized with? And they said, yeah, Lord, we're able. Mm. And he said, well, you are indeed going to drink of my cup and you are indeed going to be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with. But right. to sit on my right and my left isn't my decision. That's God's decision. He said, but this is the crux of the matter right here, Matthew 20, 20, the crux of the matter. He said, but I don't want you to act that way anyway. Right. He said, that's how the world acts. He said, the princes of the world act like that. The Think heathen act that. like that. The sinners act like that. The little shots want to lord it over the uh, the oh, big the shots, shots want to lord it over the little, little shots. shots. You know, the yeah. chiefs want to get it over the over the Indians. And uh, he said, he said, I don't want you to act that way. He said, he said, if you want to, if you want to be in my kingdom, then you need to be a servant. If you want to be great with me, right. then you come in as a servant. You come in as a blesser, as a helper. Right. And he said, I, just like I didn't come to be ministered to. He said, the Son of Man didn't come to be ministered That's to. It. But to minister Ever the and example. to give my life a ransom for many. So Jesus said, no, that's not how I want you to act. I don't want you to be a, a big shot up here and lord it over these folks down here. He said, I want you to serve, be yeah. a helper, be a server, be a minister uh, and, 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 and give your life for a ransom for many not to be waiting on. You didn't come right. here to get served. You came here to serve. And that's the lifestyle of Jesus. That's the lifestyle when he talks about the Good Samaritan. Well, it's living to give. That's awesome. I mean, that's exactly the way it is. I, you know, when you were talking about the widow lady that fed Elisha, mm -hmm. you know, and she, uh, the Lord said, I have commanded a widow. Mm -hmm. There was something in that widow yeah. that he knew that if Elisha would walk up to her and ask her, she'd serve Elisha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she knew. And if she hadn't, she'd have died. And she'd have and died. If she had not already, have died. there was something in her God already saw, just like in the Virgin Mary, just like in so many different people throughout the Bible. There was something he saw in them that he knew he could count on her exactly. to do exactly what she, uh, the man of God needed. Exactly. I mean, and both of them got blessed. I mean, she was yes, blessed above all her neighbors. Of course. She was sitting out there really in high cotton, just without a care in the world in one regard. Oh, absolutely. Because she knew they were going to eat as the long as that man 
was, was there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's such an astounding lifestyle. What is living? Living to give is living with a mindset that you are charged by God, that, that whatever resources you have, yeah. to not think high-minded about exactly. it, but to that offer it to God. you're for the king and the kingdom. Yes. You're going to do something for the kingdom of God. And realizing God's going to bless you for it. You're not doing it to get blessed, but you know that's in the system. That's I in the system. I know if si- I go out here and plant system. tomatoes, I'm going to get what tomatoes. A that's just yes. in the system. If I go out here and plant corn, I'm going to get corn. That's just in the system. It's a law of God. Well, that's such a, you know, we're out of time again. Always. But, you know, the the fact is, Terry, just sitting here, you and I talking about this, such a comfort to my own soul to realize that God has this already built into the system. And that because of the blood of Jesus, we have access to all of the resources of heaven. Absolutely. And we're not just living to live. We're not just marking time on planet Earth. Right. We're not just living to live. Even in church, we're not just giving just to give either. Right. There's a purpose in it. We are living to right. give. That's really living when we're a blesser, a helper, uh, a, a minister, a lover, a lifter, an embracer, a carer, a sharer, like Jesus. Hallelujah. One more time, we are <laughs> more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Bye-bye, y'all. Hello, everybody. Renee and I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for watching today. Renee and I always enjoy ministering to you. And one thing about the word, it works. I've always said about the, our books and tapes and products that there's no theory back there. It's 54 years of third world missionary evangelism that I know for a fact it works. You know, the COVID thing is about wrapped up, thank God, and uh, different restrictions are lifting around the world. And so uh, we're beginning to move out around the world again, which is what we've done for 54 years. And so uh, we want to invite you to partner with us, to hook up with us, to go around the world with us. You know, in our as far as teaching and training, we train missionaries, uh, we train pastors, Uh, I've had pastors conferences in country after country after country, which is something God spoke to me to do when I was just a teenager to train ministers. And so we've done that. But we also have open air crusades and different kind of crusades in different nations uh, with healings and miracles and salvations. So we want to invite you to be partners with us as we have partnered with other ministries all, really all of our lives. And we pray for our partners daily. We'll pray for you daily. So make it a consideration, make it a prayer, see what the Holy Ghost says to you. And uh, we'd be glad to have you partner with us and go around the world with us. God bless you.